This is the Amp Hour Podcast. Released November 19th, 2017. Episode 368. The EEV Blog Spark Gap Generator. Welcome to the Amp Hour. I'm Dave Jones from the EEV blog. And I'm Chris Gamble of Contextual Electronics. It happened. What happened? My home got invaded by an Internet of Things appliance. Oh, I saw your tweet of that. Oh, man. What? Yeah. Oh. There's a Mila? 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 How do you say that? Mila. That's how you Mila. pronounce it here. Okay. I don't okay. know. Mila. Yeah. like they, I know they make vacuums. So what did German you get? German company. Uh, I got a dishwasher. Uh. Well... Presum- well, actually, it obviously wasn't me. It was Mrs. EEV blog. Uh huh. Right. Got a new dishwasher. <laughs> she just like the other one. She was fed up with it. Just mm-hmm. you know, completely. Yep. yep. Yeah. I mean, had it for yeah, like ten years. Repla- you know, yeah. Like, yeah, say, yeah. Re- replacement cycles. Yep. So here's the real question: Was it even an option to get something without internet I connection these know, days? I don't know because I didn't like go high-end. shopping for it. She oh, didn't no. even go shopping. She just ordered it online. You know. Oh really? And oh jeez. Yeah. No, without. So, so, I, I, I just came home yesterday and here was a new dishwasher. Please install dish, it. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, a, dish, a dishwasher that greeted you once you entered the, the house. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Welcome home, Dave. That's right. I'm sorry, Dave. I can't clean that dish. Man says yes. <laughs> oh, man. Open I, the dishwasher I, door, Hal. <laughs> <laughs> it does it. It actually opens on its own. It pops oh my the door God. open after it's wow. finished. Wow. It's got a little Dude. actuator that opens the door. Oh, uh, one of these days you're going to be recording and you're going to be like, my bank account's empty. <laughs> yeah. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> my dishwasher stole all my, all my uh, online currencies. <laughs> and laundered it. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh. Well, it's not a laundry, but it's not, that would have been funnier if it was a right, right, right. washing machine. But yep. <laughs> oh, so tell me about it. So what does it do? Oh, I, I don't want to know. I don't like. I was like, I was installing it. Like you know, you're, there's an install process where you can set the sure. water hardness. You know, the hardness mm-hmm. of the water and the, all sorts of, you know, time and date and everything. Cause it's got a timer. Yep. And then it popped up with melee at home. And then oh, I instantly man. knew what that means. And I went, this thing has Wi-Fi access, doesn't it? And she went, uh huh. <laughs> like as in, uh-huh. it's a feature. <laughs> The crazy oh. thing, folks, is the dishwasher said, uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, man. Uh, oh, brave new world here, buddy. Yep. Well, so, so, so did you also... Uh, here's, here's a product idea for you, Mr. Product, product Design Company. Yeah. The, uh, you, know, you could sell it with every IoT device, the, the EEV blog Spark Gap Generator. <laughs> <laughs> right. That, <laughs> Instantly that you... block all RF in your house by flooding the, flooding the spectrum. <laughs> <laughs> no, or it just applies that directly to the RF output transistor. Oh, there you go. It, yeah, you know, yeah. Boom. Poof. Magic smoke. Oh man. Magic so, smoke mode. So is it is it like you just don't put it on your network then? Did you even yeah, try it? But no, no, no. I didn't even try it. Okay. I didn't want to try it. Just out of. I was gonna say principle. you should get like a you should get like a MiFi or like a you know a controlled a controlled attack surface like right. a, you know like a like a cellular to Wi-Fi modem kind oh, of thing. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. And then and then just hook it up to that just and then just like put like a wire shark on there too and see what it's see what it's doing right. you know, I would be very interested. Wire shark? Yeah, wire shark. Well, I can te- imagine what it is. It's a little device that sniffs Wi-Fi, RF stuff. Uh, so it, technically, it, it, it used to do it on Ethernet. I I'm pretty sure it works on Wi-Fi oh, as well. But okay. it just just watches yeah just watches all the raw traffic going through. Right. And, is this uh, a is this a commercial product? Open source product? What? I don't think it's open source, but I think it is free. Last time I used it, it was free. Let's oh, see. it's just an app, is it? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so right. it's a, I think it's like a, maybe a freemium thing. like some. Oh, no, it says GPL. So. Oh, okay. Uh, there yeah. you go. And, what, you uh, stick it on your phone? or you? There you go. Monkey? There's your video for today. You can just you can just watch what it does, right? Right. Um, yeah. So basically, yeah, you can just kind of... It's good. It's really good for like troubleshooting. Uh, I was used to work on an Ethernet product. And I learned about it from my my firmware friend who wanted to kind of just troubleshoot as we were trying to negotiate network traffic right. stuff like that. Okay, so. it's a network protocol analyzer. Cool. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And it's but it's it's higher level, so you'll see like you know handshakes and stuff like that going oh, down. Oh, it's got a graph. Can <laughs> it? <Ooh>. <laughs> is that a spec? No. What is that? No, that's something I think else. It's Sorry, just like I, a I thought that was statistical. an RS spectrum. I was going to get very excited. No, I think it's like it shows like how many pings are happening, and then you know how much. 
you know, so you can just kind of see what's going through. Right. So, yeah. Um, hey, yeah, that's it pretty might be cool. And it has it got its own, what's an air peak and air P cap NX USB dongle? Looks like that's for actually doing the Wi-Fi stuff. So Right, but if you've already got your Wi-Fi built into your notebook or whatever, you can just run it, I I'm presume. not sure, actually. I don't know. Yeah. It might it might yeah. need special, like, queuing for that kind of okay. stuff. So either way, mm-hmm. it's uh, it's cool. great for that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. So, yeah, maybe maybe take a look. See what it, see if it's calling home, you know. <laughs> and uh, I, I can't... So what is the... Did you read the brochure, at least? Is it I, like... Yeah, I haven't read it, no. Okay. No, I imagine sorry. that it's like you get a notification when your dishes are done, but your I have to say... Your phone or something, or you can maybe yeah. re- remotely start and stop it or check the progress Again, on your phone. All things you know, that are crap. not necessary. Like, a lot uh, of things totally not can be handled with timers, you know what I mean? I know. Like, well, it does have a timer on it, you know, start the yeah, dishwasher right. during the day. When when you uh, we do this, we start it during yeah. the day, um, yeah, so we get, use like, our power uh, solar power. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, so I used to do that at night. I would do it at night when it was like lower rates too. Oh right, okay. Yeah. Yep. Hmm. Yeah, for us it's the opposite. It's during the day when we're pissing away the solar. If we don't use it, we lose it almost. You know, we we get uh, get paid to feed in tariff. We get paid so little. I really have to investigate again the battery solutions for solar battery solutions because apparently, like they've halved in price in the last year since I last last looked. Yeah, e- everyone's nice, talking nice about it now. It's like, yeah, yep, yep. because yeah, they were very expensive. Um, I'm sure they still are, but yeah, they're well. <laughs> we talked about that a couple. Down remember, a we talked about the uh, DIY Powerwall, and then there was a response yeah, video right. that was very <laughs> yeah, funny yeah. to that. And uh, but there, I do follow as a result of that whole thing. I started following a couple, a couple YouTube channels out there that are, are focused on that stuff, and it was, yep. uh, yeah. So good, hmm. good, good way to research and, out there. A, a tip for people: if you're gonna like do response videos. I haven't watched the whole thing, but it's like we just like rant this stuff off the top of our head. None, <laughs> yeah. none of this is prepared. Like it's not like we've done our research and <laughs> right. and, the, and this is the final word at the right. Amp Hour. You know, right. I, like... I, got, I got another one of those this week too. I was like, well, <laughs> really? you know, we yeah. just, yeah, just kind of do our thing, you know. Like, <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're just getting to this is this is the this is like me and Dave having a coffee or just hanging out by the water cooler, right? This yep. is this is no, me and Dave a, catching up for we, the week. Like so. I, I literally rode my bike in, walked into the oh, office, turned so off the healthy. computer, and press record. You know, that's like the preparation. He's, he's for a this sweaty show. mess right now, folks. <laughs> I am so, so much so I had to leave the aircon on. Yeah, um, right. So yeah. <laughs> Even though okay, I'm so back channel. back to your right. uh, your your IoT device that's going to kill you. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> with that, yeah. So is is there? I guess the the real question is: Is there a device in your mind that would be worth having connected like that? A home appliance you're talking about? Sure. Yeah. Right. So it's got to be like a white good. Yeah. Pro- yeah. That's a yeah. That's a good way to to classify. I, yep. White goods. I can't think of it. Okay. Like you I mean, know, like, like your even, solar even the, your solar tracker is or is I not? I do well no it's like kind of no well it's not connected to it's connected to the internet I I've done a video where but it's not connected to my Wi-Fi at all like it's it's just got a three G GSM modem in it and it spits the data out automatically to the website that I don't mind because oh, I never have I to touch it right and I don't have to worry about my Wi-Fi <laughs> going down or locking up or doing whatever right yes just... that's right cellular solutions are the best solutions <laughs> Ting. so says the man who works <laughs> for <right. laughs> no yeah um, uh, yeah um, no that that makes sense so you're sure saying you're saying more of a I mean like, not that that's not people no, can see what's but, going but on but with that you, is but... that is purpose design that is all time like you know yeah. uh, because uh, like solar monitoring you've got to do it somehow whether or not you uh connect a like you have a dedicated computer right next to mm-hmm. it that logs it via usb or whatever yeah. or whether or not you connect to your home wi-fi uh or whether or not you're doing it like bluetooth like i was before like every week i would uh like it keeps the data for a couple of weeks so i'd log in with my bluetooth app on my phone i'd Mm-hmm. Suck down the data and then upload it. Right, you know, like a and cable replacement solution. A, at a certain cable point, replacement right? solution, yeah. almost. Yeah, yeah. And and that's I, you know, it's it's just a matter of where you store the data. And this one automatically yeah. stores it on the solar an- analytics website. Right, you know? right. Yeah, um, yep. which and went down like a... the other day. By the oh, way. Oh, okay. Yeah, when I was been down for <laughs> like the a sun, week. The sun, sun still worked, right? <laughs> <laughs> it still goes. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> um, but yeah, it went down for like a week. Yeah, so, that'll be really interesting to hear. Apparently, as you didn't lose do data. That. They're they're saying, look, we're having issues with our data, but data's being saved. So you know, trust mm. us. Um, <laughs> trust us. <laughs> I haven't yes. checked since. I should check after the show that it's if it's come back on yet. Mm. So you anyway, know, so so I was. No, at, so I was the at, answer is no. Like you know, 
Uh, well, let's go through the list. Lights, no. <laughs> I'm sick of that crap. Um, I dishwasher, don't know. I saw, no. Uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, J- uh, John from uh, Superhouse. Oh, he yeah, just posted well, a good video about that. Uh, but that's all DIY as well, and yeah, it's internal, yeah, yeah. right? So yeah. that's kind of the real question. I guess right. that's kind of what escapes your house, right? Right, yep. Yeah. Well, he's he's done videos on you shouldn't rely on the internet. Like, right. Because, yeah. like, you know, it, it should be uh, like he's into home automation but not remote home automation unless right. he's changed. Um no, I don't think so. On that because, he does. Yeah. Uh, so if people didn't see, so John John Oxford's Jonathan been on the show Oxer, before. Yeah, yeah uh, he does Superhouse now. He was. Uh, he also does. Free He's Tronic. always done Superhouse TV. Sure, he's been yeah, doing whatever. it for. Uh, that, I mean, it's his full time thing now because of the, oh, his other because, company. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. of the. Um, yep. And so, but yeah, he was showing like he has a video where he was just showing how he wires up the. It's all Ethernet based though, which is interesting. Yeah, yeah. And so, yeah, no. Yeah, because it's bloody reliable. There. Right. Exactly. <laughs> Give me cable any day of the week. Yep, I agree. Yeah. Okay, so sorry, keep going. Lights? No. no. Well, or no. Dishwasher? Uh, d- dishwasher? No. no, I don't see the point. Uh, washing machine? No. Uh, dryer? No. Uh, yeah. Fridge? Everyone craps on about, oh, the all fridges will be internet connected because <laughs> you can reorder your food from bloody Amazon or whoever. I mean, if you, you, if know, you happen like, to store all your source code on the fridge, that you uh, could really save your ass. I don't know if you've yep, seen the no. last season of, of, of uh, Silicon no, Valley. No, I haven't. Oh, you got to watch it. Man. I got to so watch good. it. I know, yeah. I know. Season four. It was good. Yeah, right. Okay. So it's fridge? No. Uh, no. Oven? No. No. No, uh, no June. Was it June? What was that? What was that really expensive toaster oven? Is it June or something else? Oh, no, I know, June's no, the door lock. I, door lock? <laughs> your, your juicer? No. Juicer? <laughs> tea, tea infuser? Uh. <laughs> tea infuser, that's right. We talked about that one last week. Jeez. Yeah. Oh, uh, like, uh, no, like I'm, and, and I, I would have to say that if he's, anything... He's apoplectic here, folks. Yeah. It, it would probably be the fridge. I wouldn't do it personally, but if mm-hmm. things are going to be internet connected, it probably the fridge Just, and the reorder thing because people are so such lazy how bastards. How about like security monitor? Uh, I have a security system, um, okay. but yeah, it's like you can. Because that's like what Nest is like, getting into, but once right? Once again, this is well, yeah. The and and Amazon with the you know oh, yeah. the let the, the couriers in. Oh my God, yeah. Let we the didn't talk about that, in, did we? You know? <laughs> and oh, and the and the survey is that fifty percent of Americans think that hey, that's not a bad idea. I'd give that a try. You know. Uh, and, money and, back guarantee. Yeah, security system. <laughs> anyway, s- security systems and yeah, all that sort of, like security systems back to base has been a big thing for forty years. You know, mm-hmm. thirty years yeah. or whatever. Um, you know, I, uh, since dial-up yeah, I phone saw, lines. But I saw a commercial for a Honeywell system that's kind of like the you know the August Smart Lock is doing, or like the Ring is a doorbell and like all these things that are like mm. camera based. But then, yeah, um, what's it called? Honeywell came out with one where it's a security system, but it's literally like filming inside your house. Yeah, yeah. And like, I'm okay with external. I, I had a friend. I had, or I was talking with my coworkers about this when we stayed in an Airbnb. Like, mm. I'm okay with an external facing camera. Maybe not the safest thing, but at least, you know, like, has a practical purpose. Who's right. at the door, blah, blah, blah. And to blah. check who's up the alleyway yeah, or whatever. Right. You know, yeah, right. Check if your package is safe, all that stuff. Right. That's a big thing, right? Yeah. Internal cameras, I, I'm staring yep. at my webcam right now, and there's a piece. There is an old yep. amp hour business card covering it. Yes, there are um, is it, microphones. Who who have we had on the show that actually covers up the mic? Uh, covers oh, up the, Mike Osman Mike unplugs Osman? the TV. Is it where, yeah. yeah, I thought it yeah. was. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, or maybe who else was that? I think maybe Joe Fitz also when, uh, talked about when, that. When security researchers start covering up their webcams. I mean, like, I you think know, this is just a matter. I mean, like, it just creeps me out. I mean, like, yeah, yeah. cameras in, in, the, in the home really creep me out. I, I, yep. Even phones sometimes. Like, I... You know, that's a convenience thing, I think, but like... Right. Yeah. Yep. Says a man hey. who has had a webcam in his lab, you know. But, yeah, right, right. You know. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you can watch Dave right now, folks. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Um, I So, I was at Supercon over the weekend, and mm. there was a very good talk by Elliot Williams, one of the uh, editors of Hackaday, and he was just talking about basically doing like everything we're talking about here he was talking about doing it himself but he was talking about doing it all behind the firewall so he's doing right. mqtt which is the uh, transfer protocol doing mm-hmm. it with esp8266 or esp8032s mm-hmm. and then what was the last thing i guess maybe some kind of hub and then but basically you don't need to go outside your house so you want to know when your dryer's done your washer's done whatever right 
you just he made a device that's just a button and a light and it shows you know it just is connecting those two things he's publishing within the within the firewall dryer slash uh you know status yeah. and then he just watches that and it was a really great presentation it was it was a pretty high level overview but um I'm excited for that talk to come out. I it actually encouraged me, Dave. I got MQTT <laughs> working. I, I that's something where I said I couldn't do it for for I don't know why, but I just I said still that, don't uh, know what it is. So you know, it's basically just like a publish protocol, right? So it's just like it's like uh, I'm gonna say all this stuff wrong, but basically <laughs> it's like it's like a way to publish what you're doing, and then you have a central server. Right, so you can set up on a Raspberry Pi. You can set up a oh, okay. right. a broker. It's called, yeah. and then you have clients. So it's brokers and clients, mm-hmm. or broker and clients. Um, yeah. And so in this case, so and let's talk about the driver. Brokers rip off the clients. Yeah, <laughs> that's a different thing. Right. Uh, <laughs> uh, so like you'd have a client on your on your dryer, for for uh-huh. instance, maybe you have a temperature sensor there, and it says the temperature is you know a hundred C, right? And then yeah. you can. And you, maybe you broadcast that to the, you just broadcast it, right? But you say where mm. the endpoint is, which in this case is the broker. And you say 100C, 100C, 98C, 80C, yep. 70C, whatever. And is right? it all encrypted? That's the piece I'm not sure about. I'll get back right. to that. Uh, and then you, then the broker basically stores that stuff. And then you can subscribe to that from other services, assuming, again, mm-hmm. I don't know about the security piece. But then you could have a phone or you could have an app or you could have a piece of hardware. In this case, Elliot showed a button with an LED and it subscribed to that. Basically, it was just going to the server and watching. It got Sorry, it got rebroadcast out of the broker, I believe. And then mm-hmm. um, this device that says now it's just watching for wa- uh, dryer messages, right? And it says dryer temperature right and then he set the threshold once he gets below a certain threshold the light goes on and it says it's ready to be done the button resets it simple right yeah but really oh, it's just like a the- mechanical timer you throw clothes in you set timer you come back and it switches itself off magic yes uh, yeah i agree but this is like if you wanted a notification system that's one way to do it right so he said he has like a four floor really narrow house yep. so that's why right um Okay, so whether or not that's needed, that's that's an argument. The thing that was interesting to me is he did the same thing then for monitoring solar, right? So he was talking right. about having basically a me- he basically had a serial out from a, a you know a DMM or something like that, went to MQTT, was publishing to his broker, and then he just watched it elsewhere and was able to graph it. Now mm-hmm. again, you could do that locally, but you know again this is this is like the wire replacement thing we were talking about, right. and that also was interesting to me. And so just this is a general like problem solving tool or a you know a skill set yes it is you know wi-fi or you know some other protocol base but it mm-hmm. it was very interesting from that perspective i've i've known about this for a while, mqtt for a while but yep i didn't but there's really a see whole it. bunch of other ways to do it sure right? of course, like, like right. the same thing it's just yet another flavor of sure of course yeah. of course but but i think mqtt is like one of those things where we're going to keep hearing about it as like, especially right. with more and more devices, even some of the stuff that might be commercially available. I was going to say, you think yeah. uh, that commercial stuff might start. Oh, it's an ISO standard, right? Is it? Okay. It's been yeah. around for a long time. I know that. Yeah. Um, and then so, so like uh, I was using, so Adafruit has a great tutorial about getting started on the server. And then it got to the point where it's like, set up the broker on their service, right? Adafruit.io, mm-hmm. right? Which is one of their new data services. And you could totally do that. However, right. you don't need to, and that's the key point of the whole thing, right? So, like, basically, your broker could be outside your house, right? But it also but it could be inside have... your house. Got it, right? Got it. And that's the key thing, and and that's yep. and that's really the flexibility that I want because you just say, you know, you could say the server is Adafruit.io, or you could just say Raspberry Pi dot local, whatever your yep. address yep. of your your um, thingy, thing. my bobbies. Yeah. Yep. And so that's I think that's that's going to be the thing that allows us to keep our sanity is like if you have a service. And it's yeah, built but, to work but with both. But once again, if your firewall gets hacked, then you're then they're straight in. They're looking at you through the webcam. You know. I mean, you wouldn't use this for webcam, but yeah, I know what you mean. Right. Yes, I I agree. Yes, there's always yeah, um, and that's a bigger thing. And yeah, it should be encrypted. Blah blah blah. But I don't. I haven't gotten that far yet, so I don't know. Uh, right. So, hmm. but I, I think in terms of just like practical, like in terms of like a practical implementation of like quote unquote iot like this is this is the closest i've gotten and Got uh it. it's it's pretty cool so that was okay. great uh and i'm looking forward to that talk i'll i'll uh, post a link when we when we find it there's yeah so there was some good talks excellent yeah can we got to see talk uh, about i got to hang, hang out with a lot of a lot of good peoples this weekend too i don't know if i i think i mentioned last week peoples. I would be there. 
Peoples. Yeah. Lots White of peoples. peoples. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> a lot of former guests were there. Uh, so that was nice. Excellent. Hopefully a lot of future guests were there. And you gave Jerry a hug. Yes, of course. Right, yeah, so because Jerry, you Jerry posted was there. this photo on yeah. Jerry's in the background looking all forlorn and like alone. It was, it was so yeah. funny. It was just the only shot I got of everyone right. at once. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, right. <laughs> yes, Dave, David prompted me to give Jerry a hug. <laughs> right. Uh, but yeah, yeah it, was, it was really nice. Uh, you you I, I didn't do... just like walk up to from behind and. No, no, that'd no. be creepy. Right. Uh, <laughs> No, it was really great. Less, less creepy than oh, Dave Jones said I've got to hug you. you know? Right, right, right. This, yeah, okay. Mr. Jones says it sends his regards. <laughs> hug. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh goodness. Yeah. yeah. So uh, yeah, lots of lots of hardware hacking in this weekend, and yeah, hung out with Mike and uh, what that man did with that badge was very interesting. It was, <laughs> I, I, in the end, I didn't see it. What? Oh, there's has uh, it been published? I'll, yeah, I'll send you a post. Um, okay. So, uh, but the crazy thing, so like, you know, it was so like, like we talked about last time, it was like a pick 32. And, you know, I was like, all right, I'll give it a shot. MP lab, whatever. Got all that stuff installed. Um, and uh, <laughs> I opened it up and I'm like, I have not programmed firmware in a very long time. I have yeah, no idea right. what I'm <laughs> And not to mention, like, I mean, it was pretty advanced firmware to start with, right? It was doing like, image transforms and stuff like that oh jeez uh, right yeah and wow. so but some people were doing that stuff and yeah uh, <laughs> cool so uh right it was it was tough it was it was tough to to get my head around but some people did so that's great okay i've got the link i'm having a look oh yeah you never you had you had not seen like the pre- the preliminary versions either I've I've seen the like the handmade board. Oh and yeah, stuff. it was pretty similar yeah. to that. It was just right. like solder mask on top of that. Right. Um, yeah. The big stuff. I mean, like any project, right? I mean, like you think about well, like you're dealing with this too now. Is the the firmware takes at least twice as long. Like the hardware is sucky, right? But once you actually right, get it working, right. yep. you know, it's like it's pretty fixed. You're not like oh, let's just throw another feature on here. Let's redo uh-huh. all this. No, it's like no, nope, it's all firmware now. Do the, the do the most you can with the firmware, and then yep. Rev two could be in a big iteration. But yeah, right. You know. It's good to get your hardware right the first time if you can. It is. Mm-hmm. So yeah, he ended up like putting like a scope on there, uh, which was insane. Oh, and, okay. Oh, that that that's what it was. Okay, that's why you could see the waveforms. Okay. I thought it was yeah, a yeah, yeah, yeah. He did like thing. a microphone into that too, and stuff like right. that. And uh, you know, yeah, just it. crazy LEDs. So uh, I think there's there's a link to the uh, badge hacking. Someone made like a 3D printer with it, like a. Right. They they use the screen to expose a uh, SLA type printer. So. Okay. Uh, Sweet. Yeah. So. Cool. Um, yeah. So what have you been up to? How's your product going? I mean, like, is My it product? Uh, yes, it's imminent. We had a last minute kerfuffle. Uh uh-huh, um, As as you do. Yeah. As you always do. But yeah, uh-huh. no, I they're being shipped tomorrow. Uh, fifty oh, wow. units. Yeah. Okay. So I'm getting. Yep. So it's happening, and the Kickstarter like needs to happen in the next few days. <laughs> oh, because you're on that shipping deadline, you were saying, right? You yeah, want to get it before yep, Christmas. So, okay. Yep. And um, I like it is. I, I'm physically not capable of shooting a polished video, <laughs> and and editing a polished video. It's just not possible. Well, all you need is some. I can write you some like some like chunky like piano music like. I I thought about shooting like a spoof. <laughs> like you know, starting out like it's all polished, you go, oh, right, it's right, bullshit, right, right. you know. And then, then you like, like turn the lights off. He's like, right. let's get this shit done. Come on, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know no, what you're no, getting. No. So it's just my crudely stitched together mm-hmm. thing, voiceover, you know. And then I was going to voice over the whole lot, and then I go, oh look, <laughs> Your who voice? cares? I'll just use it. Yeah, exactly. I'll, I'll just use the in camera mic, the shit in camera. Yeah. So yeah, like I shot the like you know, so I was shooting all like uh, shots of all the different features working, right? And I was just doing a voiceover on top of that, I, you know, speaking in, as I normally do, um, just to remind myself what to say in the voiceover, you know? And then I ended up just using that audio that I wasn't going <laughs> to... that I wasn't <laughs> serious about using anyway. And it's like, yeah, uh, yeah. meh, you know, I just couldn't give a shit, really. Right. It's just... I mean, yeah. the thing is, you know, yeah, we talked about it last week. The other the people already know what they're getting, so... Exactly. Either, either people want it 
or they don't. My 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 video is not really going to sell it. To right, me. exactly. You know, it's yep, like right. it's not yeah. it's not exactly like the the magical ninety nine dollar point too or whatever. No, it's a bloody whatever no, that it, point is where people yep. will just do it on a whim. Yeah, no, it's a multimeter, and it's either you're in the market for a two hundred buck class multimeter or you aren't. You know, my oh, is that I, all it's going to be? I didn't oh, know that. well, uh, well, the Kickstarter or will Kickstarter be one. around what's, that. What's yeah. the MSRP? Is two ninety nine? I don't like know. Oh. Huh. Go higher. <laughs> Go higher. You think? You think Go it's higher cheap. discount, man. No, it's a well. That, see, the problem was is that my original intention was that it was going to be a two hundred dollar retail meter, right? Mm-hmm. Two hundred dollar class meter, and then the prices just crept up, and up and up. Oh yeah, right. And like you know, to yeah, a point margins where, being what yeah, they are, and yeah. you said that chip you had to source uh, could yeah, be more like, expensive. And, so. Yeah, so we had to add you know another voltage reference there, adds on more you know a better voltage reference adds on more cost this and that and you know and all yep. of a sudden they said oh you know I have got to supply my own probes now and you know like it's uh, yeah yep oh you're on up. oh you have like sourced the probes you mean like I've, I've the... sourced them yeah I'm oh. using the Bryman probes to oh go got with it got it. Oh, yeah, those are pretty good, anyway. though. I like those. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're nice. So, okay. But still, they cost, you know. Sure, that's yeah. cost I had in fact. Logistics, in. all that stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, still doing and, your, uh, and, and your and no, no BS packaging? Are you doing that? Uh, yeah, I'm doing the no BS packaging. You know, I've got a 1,000 like cases sitting here next to me thousand. in 14 boxes, 1,000 custom cases. As like in the... zipper, zipper, soft zipper Oh, cases. I see, I see. Right, and like they, carrying like, case. Yeah. yeah, and I didn't, like, they don't weigh much. But they cost a fortune to ship because of the volume of them. Ship you know? to you at a thousand yeah. at a time. Yeah, sh- ship to me at a thousand oh, yeah. at a time. Oh, that, I was shocked man, at how much it by, cost. A th- yeah, a thousand death by a thousand little cuts, right? It's like, cases, like yeah, a thousand you don't, zipper well, cases. Well, you don't like think about it either. Like, <laughs> no, so, like, I, no like, it's, like, it's it's worse when you're doing like sourcing of individual components. When you start going to like, yeah. oh, I'm buying from not one distributor, buying from five distributors. The five and, distributors oh, this part. The, get hit oh, with that five different courier charges. Exactly. Yeah. And is you don't you don't factor that in you got you get rush 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 payments uh-huh. all that stuff that's all yep. top line costs you have to factor in that totally you know, yeah it's, yep it can mm. it can really get up there that's where like it starts to make sense to have yep. like to have a courier account and stuff like that like to have a UPS yep. or DHL number or something like that so yeah yeah and I won't give you details but part of the last minute kerfuffle was wondering about whether or not we'd make another change to the hardware. Oh really? Wow. And yeah, and they came back and said, "Look, we can don't don't do, don't do that." <laughs> <laughs> and maybe, kind of, we can still deliver some before Christmas, maybe. Right. You know, and but the uh, and then they said, "Oh, but by the way, we've already got two thousand boards in stock." Oh, it'd have been a board change. And they're X dollars each, and like Ooh, I yeah. and I would have to eat that cost because yeah. uh, they they weren't going to have a. You know, a bar of that because it wasn't. You know, it's a change that I wanted. And what uh, what uh, was the cost of the like? Per, this is like the just the PCB. You're saying? Oh, it, it was multiple dollars per board because it's like a four layer board. You know, it's a complex four layer. Got it. Yeah, it's board, not right? small it's either. Not, so. And it's not small. It's not right. Ten centimeters by ten centimeters. You know. Right. It's, okay. It's yep. bigger. It's like. I don't know, yeah, that's another one that sneaks up on you. You know, like you don't yeah. think about it. it like, yeah. like the decision starts like, oh, well, we should really do six layers, or we should really do four layers, or whatever. Yep. Like four layers isn't bad actually. No, 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 it's but, not bad these days, but it is an additional cost. You know. Sure, of course. And yeah. um, and they said, yeah, look, we've we've already got two thousand boards in stock, and okay, we can scrap them, <laughs> if you want to make some changes. But mm-hmm. yeah, kind yep. of, no, let's just hold off for version. Was this two, like a you know? uh, change that would be like a nice to have kind of thing? It wasn't it's like one a critical. of those nice to haves. You know, yeah. no, 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 it's not a critical thing. It's just See, that's one of those why you nice do. A, that's why you do a rev one point one, and then you yep. the yep. new and improved exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So at least anyway. a bunch of firmware changes with it too, yep. and yeah, just right. just plan. It's like it's almost like planning for that, you know, like yeah. yeah and it's and, to and get then it out. I figured that we're going to like once these things hit. You know, once there's a thousand out there, people are going to find issues. Like, you know. Yeah, that's right. That's like, also true. Right. You know, they they found issues with my BM two three five meter, and they they worked on that for two and a half years, and then right. you know they were so careful, and then they then they released it, and then the reports started coming in, and they had to make some hardware changes, and yep. yeah, you, you know, do the like, best you can, and then you, you know, you, you, know, yeah, you yeah. deal with it. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. I think that's that's what you got to do, and I think yeah. that the. If you wait too long, well, you just never get anything. Oh, market, you're right? never going to get it done. Yeah. 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 No. So I, I just had to go. Look, just go ahead. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's <laughs> yep. that's a good call. So. Yeah. Anyway. Oh, I was cool, happy man. With it. 
So uh, firmware crunching continues. Yes, the uh, app and everything. The app is the app has taken forever, and we're really not even close to a real polished app. Mm. You know, yeah, it's um, tough, right? It's like a lot of we, UI stuff. And- yeah, yeah. No, I was talking to David the other day. Um, you know, because we he's back on it working again because the the release is imminent, and we had to have something for the video. Mm-hmm. Um, and oh, you could fake that. <laughs> oh yeah, well yeah, but we we we're engineers. We don't fake shit. You know. Mm-hmm. It's against our wouldn't, conscience. Wouldn't, wouldn't be the first time, man. Wouldn't be the <laughs> right. first time. <laughs> anyway, we, uh, yeah, we, we were talking like, like I, I went with hindsight. Was a mis- was it a mistake to try and do this cross platform thing? Because that was the whole idea from day one. Is that he's going to write it so it's truly cross platform? You know, mm. it'll compile for all the platforms out there. And he went probably. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know, really? I was like, yeah, he, you know. So it, it, it looks like he reckons Linux is going to be, like, really hard. Um, yeah. You know, it's not just going to automatically compile for Linux. There's just so much stuff. Um, I'm sure those who've tried to do true cross-platform development have realized this. And mm-hmm. a lot of people told me when I said I was doing cross-platform, everyone went, good luck. You know, like, and this is a computer application, though, or a phone application? Both, both. So oh, you see, that's write the other thing. The, so now you have even more, right? P- yeah, so it's currently working on Windows, either mm-hmm. desktop or, you know, tablet-y type Windows, or it's mm-hmm. working for Android. Um, okay. And it should, in theory, compile for Mac and iOS, uh, but we have yet to... We, we don't have the physical devices to do that yet, um, right. but we'll get those. And yeah, that's uh, tough. Linux that's... is the other one, and Linux is the hard one, apparently. Um, just the way all the libraries, like the graphical libraries and the interfaces and things work, it's just right. apparently, yeah, um, it's not it's not pretty. David's telling me, so it's too bad. I mean, it's yep. it's one of those things where it's like until you're not going to make everyone happy either way, right? So it's either oh, not no, going to no, be the no, best yeah, experience yeah, exactly. or you're not going to offer gonna, it or whatever, yeah. right? So yep, uh, yep. So out of the box, like if you want, like if you get a meter next month, it's probably not going to have like an iOS version of the app. You know, I think the real like, question too is like, yep. <laughs> are people even going to use it? You know, like the no, app? well maybe not, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, one of the big selling points is that it has Bluetooth, right? Right. And but like, how many people are going to use it? Probably not many, as you said. Mm-hmm. Most are going to use it as a regular multimeter. It's a nice. Which is to better have. just to have a good API and then just yeah. have someone else do the. You know the app well, later. Well, if you want to do data logging, it's got a micro SD card in it. Just log to the SD card. Yeah, and yep. then just import it the old-fashioned way. You know, it's not. Yeah. Yeah, this is mm-hmm. like this is like a product argument right here, right? This is like. A, oh yeah. You yeah. Know, what do you what do you spend your time on? What do you yeah. actually offer? All that stuff. Well, at the moment we're we're dealing with like dropped dropped and corrupted packets. It's oh, like really? where the hell are these things coming from? And everyone, you know, the more research we do, it's like, oh yeah, that's just Bluetooth. You know, <laughs> it's like, oh great. Yeah. You know, <laughs> thanks a lot. I was actually looking um, at that because I was looking to do a Bluetooth microphone right. just to like my, like just when recording on my cell phone or something like that for yep. like a really lightweight video setup. And yeah. I kept asking around about it. And as far as I can tell, yes, it does exist, of course, right? You yeah, have like. Yeah, because people use them for their right, phones, headsets, right? Like, jaw, like the jawbone, like, yeah, and, yeah, yeah all, all that. that stuff. But everyone but says they're shit. Yeah. They're, they're, and they're, and then the reason for that is the lower bandwidth as well, right? Yeah. So like. Like they they cut out a bunch of the frequency content anyways because you want to yep. get you know that uh, really high tinny kind of stuff so you can get uh, it has to fit in the one point five kilohertz bandwidth you know right well yeah. and there's also some stuff about like getting through lower bandwidth systems right mm. like they they have like this is all the telephony stuff from the old days right yeah of course yeah. which I know nothing about uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, but yeah, so like there's certain frequency content you can cut out without hmm. really much worry anyways, but that doesn't really work when you're trying to record a video, right? Unless you want to sound like you're yeah, recording through a right. cell phone, right? No, 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 <laughs> yeah. it's crap. It's just yeah. not workable. Yeah, no, they're, right. they're just not designed for that. They're designed for mobile phone calls and that's it. Right. And I for those who don't know, back in the yeah. day, you know why modems were so slow back in the day? Uh, capacitance. No, huh? the bandwidth, <laughs> same thing. is because oh, they yeah. had to fit... In the like the one point eight k was it one point eight kilohertz bandwidth of the phone mm-hmm. line, the the phone lines had the, the x amount of bandwidth, and right. so they had to develop all these you know all these x uh, mode all these x protocols you know your x thirty two bits and your you know all your other whiz bang protocols that eventually got up to fifty six k right for a regular modem. Um, that was all all that technology 
all that signal processing technology was, was had to be designed to get around the bandwidth limitation of the phone line. Hmm. If that, yeah, if, yeah. yeah, I remember reading about some of that stuff in that um, Bell Labs book. They talked about it a little bit, but right? Yeah, I thought they were talking about doing like multiplexing by. So you maintain the the frequency band like you're saying the 1.5k, but then you shift mm. it around because you you actually have more analog bandwidth, but you basically stack a bunch in the channel, right? Yeah, and it and all then, has and then to you do shift with them symbol rates and all sorts of you know, yeah. And yeah, they've got all sorts of. Weird. I'm not an expert on, you know. Yeah, well, the, okay, I don't yeah. I don't know much either. <laughs> like it's, <laughs> but yeah, that's. Uh, so that probably contributed to some of the the ability to do that with Bluetooth, 3, right? Thirty one hundred hertz, thirty four hundred hertz, something okay. like that. Yeah, there you go. Right. Versus yeah. the twenty k that you and I yeah. are hopefully getting right now. Right. That's our very yeah. low voices. And, and, and once I again, Bluetooth, Bluetooth <laughs> mobile phones are do a similar thing. You know, people yeah. say, "Oh, why, why do mobile phones sound crap?" Is because of the limited right. bandwidth. They they you know? intentionally compress that audio in the first place, right? Yeah. They try and do the best they can, but I think they do. And that's what codecs do. Like, we're on a codec right now for uh-huh. Mumble, right? That's, that's right. compressing it down and stuff like that and then re- then uncompressing it. We should yep. move on to something we actually know anything and, about. And, and, then we have, <laughs> uh, yeah, and then we have issues when there's drop packets and things like right. that. Yep. You know, yep. Because yep. then it's got to restart the algorithm, you know, because when you drop a packet or two, you can lo- you know, you lose sync in the algorithm and it's got to restart and you get that sort yeah. of, you know, break in the audio or however it manifests itself based on a based on the particular codec yeah so, well and then mm. you think about so bluetooth too like bluetooth has i mean there's just like a it's a pretty busy channel to start with right i mean there's a lot of a lot of stuff that is talking on that these days so i assume yep. that if you're trying to stream data which it's not really made for in the first place right um mm-hmm. it can get pretty easily interrupted so that's probably right. what you're seeing with those those corrupt packets right all right. well, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks. Sounds it's like, like that sucks. <laughs> things. It's like, oh, God, never again, yeah. Bluetooth, you know. Anyway. I think you'll find out, right? I mean, that's the kind of thing you got to put yeah, on the market, yeah, see, yeah, see no, what people yeah, think about put it. Put it out there and, you know. And, yeah. but, but the good thing is is that the software will get better and better, you know. Mm-hmm. So the first release of the multimeter, we expect it to be full of bugs and the feature, you know, and then mm-hmm. tons of people will come back with feedback and then we'll slowly... Yeah. You know, fix all the issues. I still think so. about that from that that microphone that you had told me about the H1 that I have, and like right, that yes. that one point one firmware was killer. It turned it from a handheld microphone to a yeah, that's right to a Into streaming a, microphone. Yeah. you know, like that changed yeah, the entire it. nature of the product, which yep. is amazing. Yeah, and it was so. just software. That's yeah. it. So, yeah. that's that's mm. when th- th- those kind of changes aren't as common. But like that right. that kind of like transformative nature can be really. Well, it's at least worth updating the firmware for. That's right. for sure. Well, well, I just uh, got an email yesterday from um, Charles at Trio Test. Did you know that the Siglent Spectrum Analyzer, that low cost, you know, Spectrum oh, yeah. Analyzer, it only had ten hertz resolution bandwidth, right? And he said, "Oh, uh-huh. the the new firmware update turns it into one hertz, right? Oh, so it's wow. which is pretty killer, right?" And huh. he said, "Yeah, just update the firmware, and you've got one hertz resolution bandwidth. Like that's pretty nice, cool, you know." Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no hardware changes. Just yep. Yeah, I will say uh, that is the uh, the benefit. So I have that that analog discovery as well. Yep. The, um, mm-hmm. And that's you know like I know your your views on uh, you know uh, software I, based I, scopes. I like the analog discovery. I've done videos on that. I think it's a nice little product. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm just saying that yeah. like that's a very baked in thing where it's all software controlled. So like they've right. thrown in other like audio yep. analyzers. Obviously, it's still limited by you know certain physical bandwidth mm-hmm. stuff but it's got an fpga on board and as long yeah, as you that's right get the analog stuff right on the front end and then you got the fpga you can and then the software stuff it's it's a nice little update stack so cool yep. bananas i'm a i'm a fan <laughs> yep ah all right you, let's get into some news i was gonna say you know what you can't update what? after the fact is a shot key diode <laughs> <laughs> this is great i'm totally stealing this idea yeah so what is I'm it? Totally, I'm totally stealing it. It's from Electron Update is the YouTube uh, channel. I can't say I'm subscribed, but I'm going to... Oh, okay. Well, I just you are now. Click, I just click the subscribe button. Yeah. El- Electron Update, what he, do- what he did is took a through-hole uh, shot key diode, a 1N5817, just a, you know, a bog-standard one, and actually sorted it in half mm-hmm. so that you can see what's inside. He actually did a cross-section cut. And, like, when, when I first saw the title of the video, I went, how the hell did he do that? Did he, you know, like, has he got some special 
uh, thing. No, sandpaper. So what he does is puts the component in an epoxy resin first. So mm-hmm. he encapsulates it in that. So it basically can't move. It's all so the leads can't bend, and you know everything's sort of encapsulated in a hard. Is it? A, I assume it's a hard epoxy. I haven't watched the whole. Yeah, yeah. I mean, detail. it's like yeah. a two, it's like a two part that then hardens. One of those yeah. two part epoxies. Yeah. Uh, yeah. One of those clear epoxies, and then he simply started rubbing it on sandpaper and just got yeah. finer and finer and finer and finer. Yeah. And yeah, um, yeah. it's just. <laughs> It's just incredible. And I like he's got, yeah. The mosquito falls into amber. And then we extract it and dino DNA. Yeah, dino. That was a very good impersonation. I, I love that. Dino DNA. <laughs> oh, man. Spare no yeah. expense. That's right. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so he's, got, he's done this yeah. with other stuff too, like surface mountain ductors and stuff like really? that. So yeah, I'm totally stealing this. I'm I'm sorry, yeah, cool sorry. Idea. I I don't know his name. Who runs the yeah. channel? But sorry, dude. I'm I'm totally stealing that. I'll I'll, I'll give him credit. Yeah, but, yeah I'm, I'm so stealing it. Yeah, no, it's that's cool. Great. It's a cool yeah. idea of like uh, you know, but like it's just to keep the package together though. That's the main idea, yeah, right? Yeah, it's, it's to There's keep no it epoxy all internally, right? Yeah, no, you could try and do it without that. But uh, the good thing about the epoxy is then it gives you something to hold on to exactly, as well yeah. when you're actually rubbing that sucker. So right, right, you know, right. Yeah, and uh, yeah, it reminds me of how you know all the you know the uh, scientist experimental scientists back in the day used to do things it's like yeah sandpaper you know you think oh, how, did, how <laughs> right. did they get shave off these atomic layers sandpaper oh, right, you right. Know, or like, like when, they're, when they're doing stuff with like carbon nanotubes yeah, too they're like yeah, yeah we yeah. use like like scotch tape yeah, yeah. Sco- <laughs> scotch tape to peel off a, a an scotch tape and carbon. What, what do you think we did you yeah know? like <laughs> simple <laughs> how did you polish that 10 meter diameter you know space telescope mirror oh you know a like, uh, like, like you do anything cloth, else, you know, yeah, one, like a, one inch at a time, man. <laughs> uh, like one, like one atom at a time, you know. They yeah, just right, keep rubbing right. it and rubbing it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. Wow, yeah. you know that's 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 great. That's yeah. great. Anyway, yep. Hats off to that. Very cool. Shout out. Yeah. Yep. Uh, lots of lots of lots of good. Uh, electronic stuff this week too i saw the did you see the quake on an oscilloscope no i haven't seen the quake on the ceiling someone actually captured a real quake it happened no they, sorry no. quake quake the video oh, game quake, oh quake yeah. the video oh bloody hell oh bloody hell i know they're no. just using the display it's silly yeah but it's, uh, it's just as it's fun the vector the vector thing. drawing yeah exactly the yeah. vector drawing stuff yeah so that never that never gets old to me like, oh, I don't they've, they've converted how have they converted it to vector I think this is probably the same way, like, uh, Todd Bailey, when he was on the show, he told us kind of like the, um, the, I think they needed to redraw the actual stuff, right? So like, Right, have, right. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So it's not like it's they not compiled the plain, or, original source code. Right, okay. right. right. Got it. So, uh, Got it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess an earthquake would also be interesting. I don't know what you would actually show for that, though. All right. Actually, like, yeah. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, it's just like like one scene. It's just got like yeah. So they've just drawn one scene and they've panned around. So you're holding a gun and there's a, a, you know, a key over there and some walls and stuff. And it's Mm -hmm. like so. That was basically a software. That's a software. uh, No, not necessarily. No. Uh, Yeah. Sometimes to draw those vectors, you need to have, uh, you know, some hardware acceleration type stuff. Oh yeah, but oh okay. You think there's hardware? Eh, Well, there's the hardware linked to the hardware. Yeah, it's true. Um, hmm. Yeah, so cool, cool. Speaking of hardware, uh, we got some news today that's unfortunate, but uh, well, not too surprising. Inevitable, uh, yeah. I would say. Pro- like yeah. you know, like I, I think we've talked about it before. We uh, let's discuss it again. Tell sure. us. Uh, Tech Shop, unfortunately, is filing bankruptcy and uh, Chapter Have Seven closed. bankruptcy, which is the bad one. Apparently, I don't and really know much about. And they closed all their doors instantly. Yeah. How yeah. how many shops did they have? How many? locations did they have i think they had like eight um eight. they had a couple it in only, california uh, so yeah. this was only a u.s based thing yeah, as far as i know yep yeah they who just opened one it? in brooklyn who was uh, they, who was the yeah. money behind it they were i don't know about funding i think were they, they might have been vc backed oh but, yeah. vc backed okay um right. they were for profit and that's and that's one of the things they talk about they were for profit yeah yeah so yeah. and for people who don't know they're a makerspace it was basically the first attempt to commercialize makerspaces right yeah right exactly and and yeah well that's what they say here it was basically the um 
and it failed. It was it was the experiment to see if you could I mean, commercialize it. I mean, ten, it made it ten years, so like that's something. Right? Oh, okay. Oh, that's yeah. oh, that's pretty. Weird. But that was was I haven't delved into right. details. So if you go to tech shops, was that losing the... money every year for ten years? No, I don't think so. But right. they, you know, they've they've been scaling so they, too. So they started out making a profit, did they? There were some years when they may have, or. I think they may have. Uh, if you right. go to techshop.ws, which is their website, it's now just a PDF. But they they have a history of the uh, of what happened, and you know, like the some of their finance. I think some of their well, they have acquisition interest contact forms. Uh, so if you want to buy, the tech <laughs> if you want to buy the gear, everyone's yeah, yeah. All, right. all the vultures come in now. Oh yeah, now I'm interested in tech yeah, shop right, because right. they they're selling all. But the I, gear. I didn't realize that the uh, that opened it pretty much opened in kind of in in time with Maker Fair, so. 2006, oh, really? 2007, yeah. Okay, I didn't know. Um, so, yeah, it's pretty... I, I didn't realize it was that old. Yeah, so wow. it's been around for a long time. And you'll see okay. them at most maker fairs, stuff like that. Right. Uh, but, but yeah, so it's kind of like... So the way I talk about it, usually the way I explain it to people is like, it's like a gym for nerds, right? And it's, you know, you go there and you pay a monthly fee and then you can use the equipment, right? And you use work, all this stuff, yeah. Work the nerd muscles. Um, right. And much like a gym, it's a for-profit model. Uh, I think... I think, you know, obviously, Dave, you're a, a gym-going person. I am. Uh, you know, like, gyms are based on the idea that not everybody's going to be there all the time and that, you know, the the cost, mm-hmm. the relative cost of uh, per square foot is low. I'm not sure that this matched that as well, right? The cost per square foot of these things is pretty but high. But the analogies are excellent between yeah. a gym, right? Because both of them, mm-hmm. right, you can get a home gym. Sure. Right. Yes. And you can do your own stuff. Right. There's a there's a lot of people who don't have the space, so that's fine. But even the ones who do have the space, you know, they buy their treadmill, they buy their uh, you know cable machine, and they buy their everything else. Yeah. I've I've (laughs) had my own home gym. Yeah. Right. And it was like yeah, and it's like it comes down to a motivation thing, right? Where you know. Well, yeah, assuming you have the space, sure. Right? And, of course, you you never get the variety of the machines and things like that. Sure, yeah. And uh, and free weights and everything else. Um, And you've got no one else to work out with, generally. Um, Yeah, I think the social aspect shouldn't be underestimated, to be honest. I mean, in both cases, really. Like, that that is... So this is a similar thing. Like, we've talked about this before. The revolution that's happened in our industry in terms of low-cost equipment Right, you can equip your own lab that has all the stuff that has the laser cutters, the three D printers, and the you know all the big machines and things like that. Uh-huh. Um, you know, so many people are doing this. You don't need a tech shop. You know, well maybe. Um, I mean, that's an accessibility well, argument for sure. Yeah. But yeah. I think it's actually a little bit broader than that. I think so. Like, yes, equipment availability is a problem, right? Uh, sometimes that's also solved by traditional maker spaces, which are usually lower cost. I yeah. think tech shop in the Bay Area was like one fifty, one sixty a month. You know, so not cheap, right? You know, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and the pr- other thing is, is location as well. You've got to have the time to commit. That's why these. That's why hacker spaces and maker spaces appeal more to your. You know, city dwellers, uh, like, city, yeah, city dwellers, you're, you're, yeah. <laughs> you're single people or, or ki- you know, the kids who live on campus or something. That's why university ones do quite well, because, well, you live there. Right. Generally. Sure. Right? I think or, yeah, that's you're part always of there and stuff like that. Whereas me, how many times have I visited my, my local hacker space once? Right. Yeah. You know, but it's because I, I it's think just, that's different, though, too. So, yeah. so I, I agree with all the points you're making, but I don't think that's ultimately what the problem was. Well, I think the ultimate the problem? problem is what? just the market size. Right, so right. everybody, yeah, yeah. at least in theory, should go to a gym or work out or whatever. Right, obviously right. some people are going to run outside or not work out at all, whatever. I, I just but think a that lot of this is this is a negative view coming from me. I just don't think yeah, there's as much need for this. No, no, I don't. Well, I don't think there's a huge need either. At, at least at the scale again, sizes that are required can, for gyms and stuff, right? C- yeah, because you can do everything at home. It's like, oh well, if you want a three D part, you can just order it, can't you? In the US, on Shapeways or whatnot. You know, yeah, you, you can do that. You can make X, Y, Z. You can do lots you know? of lots of services, but it's not even that. I just think that in terms of like, okay, so so like, why? It, it, it's just a capacity argument, right? So like, why are there so many gyms in the U.S.? It's because there's a lot of people and there's yeah. a lot of need, and in relative cost of operating a gym is you know a big upfront investment and then a low mm-hmm. cost of you know maintenance. You know, yeah. you have to maintain the machines, but really it's and, more and about it, staffing. And it, and it appeals to almost the entire population. Exactly. And so Whereas now in this, this case, is, yeah, it, it has. No. It has to be a very specific group, right? That's and it right. has to be it's a high cost of maintenance specifically, yep. right? Uh, and then and so not only do you get hit 
with the limited market size, then you get hit with those who can physically afford the time and sure. and location to get there, right? right. So, yeah, so you're limited sure. that way again, and then you're limited in terms of, well, how many people would actually need that? Right, and then stuff, and then from know? a capacity argument as well. So I yeah. think this is going the other direction now. But I think in a capacity argument, right? So everybody who's been to a gym has seen the please don't spend more than thirty minutes on a treadmill, right, which yeah. Right. Problem solved for me, but like yeah. you know, they say that <laughs> right. they say that as a capacity thing, right? Yeah. But many of the the operations that they're even talking about. So again, this is going the opposite direction of what I said mm. before. But a milling machine takes you know ten hours, or you know, depending on the size of the part or the right. you know, there's yeah, yeah. twenty four hour prints. You've done long prints before, yeah, right? Yeah, of course. Printers. Yeah, I, my, I, I don't, there's hardly ever a print I've done that takes less than an hour or two. Right. So it's like you know? if you if you truly charge for the cost of each you know of a footprint, yeah. and electricity and maintenance and all that stuff, yeah. You know, and then you try to amortize it over all the people in the group, it's just a really yeah. tough a really tough equation to crack. And I think yeah. they even said in their in their PDF that it's like without without proper like corporate backing or grants or anything like that, it it becomes really difficult. And then the fact mm-hmm. that they were trying to do it with a for profit model versus non profit model, which is what prevented them from getting some of those grants. That was also detrimental, they said. So, yep. so it seems like it's like they they play with a lot of different models, and uh, I know a lot of people that loved it there. Uh, it seemed like a good community. It oh, seemed like course. they did everything I, well. No, you will have your diehard people who think this was the greatest thing and changed their yeah. life, you know. Yeah, of course. Um, Businesses yeah. started out of here, continued through here. So yeah. um, I think, you know, successful experiment, but it's an unfortunate ending, you know. Like, it's uh, it's too bad because that's now a lot of people that – Hopefully, you know, something will rise up out of this. Maybe a smaller, more agile version, right? Of like, maybe it's a small shop with just desktop tools or, you know what I mean? It's like a shared, it's like a, it's a co-op instead of a, instead of a. Maybe, but I think it's, right, it could be a co-op based system. Right, or it's just people go to more maker spaces or start new ones or whatever. It's it's not a for, if you try and run it as a for profit, I think it's forever doomed. Yeah. It's got to be forever doomed. I, like, yeah, I, I really do wonder about that. I mean, yeah. the obviously, for-profit gyms exist, but those those are the big constraint differences of like, yeah, you know, you well, put Well, a, you see a lot of gyms go out of business, you know. It's, that's true. Um, yeah. And part of that is market flood. You sure. Know, yeah, everyone jumps on the bandwagon, but... Yeah. Yeah, I... I yeah, I so the, the optimist the in me there. hopes hopes that yeah. there is enough of a market for this because more yeah. and more people are joining the field. The pessimist in me says... Well, that's not the case, and even if it was, that it's difficult uh-huh. to operate in this space. But. I've I've looked into it as well. I've looked into making one, you know. Ha! So you know. Yeah. Right. Pun no, intended. I, I, um, no, I, it I've would be a very interesting starting, thing. You know, starting one up, and then I just I, I just you know. Right. I mean, so like, let's do it as an I estimate. Went, nah. Like, how many yeah. how many people would be interested in that in Sydney? You think? I Assa- you know? assuming you had the most perfect location in Sydney, which is. Not it does not exist. Let, let's <laughs> say, let's say a couple of hundred. If if you put it near a uni somewhere, okay. So a couple of hundred. Yep. Charge what? Like a hundred bucks a month? Oh, that's a see. That's impossible for a for a student. That's impossible right, for a exact, uni student. Right. See, so, so that's where your market is. The your... market is you can't afford it. Right. So some you of your know? stuff's cut off there, right? And then yeah. and then you have some people that are doing business stuff, but then they're they're yeah. um uh startups and they you know they're not mm. necessarily flush with cash either they might not yep. they might not want to raise money or may not have raised money so it's just it's a difficult space kind of to be in like i, so I my think reference... there are one or two tech shop type ones in sydney i've never been to them okay but that, they that are, would be an interesting you know, thing to find out yeah, yeah. yeah. i mean so but I, they're I'm... more into woodworking and crafty you know stuff mm-hmm. it's like yeah right well then than... you think think about the security stuff the insurance carrying mm-hmm. all that um yeah. So I'm I had joined that space M Hub and I'm still a member uh, yep. and actually I'm going to be working out of there more uh, for my for my job now. Right. And, and 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 they've got like you know desks where you can actually make it your mobile. Uh, where yeah, you make and it that's a the thing. Office, so like right? it's a sixty thousand square foot facility yeah. and there's a lot of fun toys in there. But I'll tell you what, the, it's forty thousand of that is actually meant for renting out as a business, right? right. Because that's that's right. where the real business is. And yep. they're nonprofit and they're backed by the city and all like right. and there's all these corporate sponsorships. What's and it's the like, name for that? What's the name like hot hot office or something? Oh, hot, hot desk, desk or yeah, hot, hot desk. desking. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah, yeah right. hot desk is also like uh like a wee word people might know. They provide like a chair, a table. Do, do they provide like big screen monitors and stuff you just plug your notebook into and they provide the internet and the power. Yeah, and usually that stuff's flexible yeah. too. So it's right. like a mailing address, and you know you have some oh, of those shared okay. amenities, and you, and, and, and you get someone to sign for packages. And exactly. Yeah, right, it's basically okay. cheaper than. 
excuse yeah. me, it's cheaper than running, renting an office. It's more expensive than hanging out in a coffee shop all day. Right. But you have more amenities. Yep. Stuff like that. So. And and you appear as a bigger entity. Yeah, exactly. You know, when right. when you've got somebody who you know you've got a concierge who takes your calls. You know. In no. often in your company name, like we've got these here in the uh, building I'm in, right? You can, yeah, you can actually rent a, a you know, a, a little, you know, <laughs> 10 square meter office space that's basically not enough room to swing a cat. And, uh-huh. but they will, uh, yeah, but, but you get a concierge who will, like, you get a dedicated phone number and they know when that phone rings to answer it in. That's As if idea. they're your secretary, right? They, yeah. You know, hello, welcome to XYZ Company, you know? Right, right. And For me, it's just, like uh, hola, yeah. this is Contextual <laughs> Electronics. Old <laughs> for Chris. Yeah, and yeah. They're, they're reasonably popular because, you know, it can make you look and sound important and bigger than you actually are, where, you know? So. Right, well. Yep. Which can, Sounds in, like which in, in I just some have a sweet Mexican matters, woman who actually, right? who sounds right. suspiciously <laughs> like Chris. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah, so it's uh, it's it's interesting to see. I, I would actually love to hear from our uh, listening audience to hear who, um, you know, if were there's other remember? models. Well, What's actually, it? were you like, did they just like, was there any hint that this was going to shut down, oh, or was yeah. it just like, did they? You came in one day and the, yeah, and the doors, doors were locked. locked. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Never hmm. had that happen to me. <laughs> <laughs> right. I know people that have had that happen at like restaurants I, they worked well, at and stuff. Yep. You know? Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> well, it's uh, it's unfortunate, but uh, inevitable. Like you, you could have almost banked money that this was no, going to happen. I, I wouldn't unfortunate. Have, I wouldn't have guessed that. I don't. I don't know enough about them. So right. I uh, bet. But if you went in and analysed, it's like yeah, you know, obviously, yeah. yep. you know, doing it as a for profit thing. Yeah, maybe as a co op thing where you know everyone, you know, puts their own money in that helps. Mm-hmm. You know fund the thing everyone's a part owner and whatnot yep then there's more incentive to you know turn up and make it work and i mean it's tough like too that. like like i you know i lived in the suburbs mm. like it's nothing like that is going to exist out there right i mean so it's yeah, like no no exactly yeah. it's uh but i think the real question too like so i think the social piece is totally worth uh paying for like you just get connections you know from that stuff but in you know like i don't need <laughs> like myspace just got a new you know big ass milling machine that i am not going to be using like you <laughs> right. know like i just don't need that kind of capability but some people do you know yeah. there's gas and so what's what's gas milling what i said i said big ass oh big, big ass, ass 3d thought, milling machine i thought it was gas milling yeah no, no. no. Uh, sorry that's what i heard i'm trying to read something at the same time oh okay that's attention. all right <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah yep so um well our best to them it's unfortunate hmm. They, they. I think it's one of those things where they kept hoping that they would get new funding at the last minute, you know, and then no, nah, they just like the money literally ran out. That's so common. We've mentioned that on here before. It's like nobody wants to admit to anyone that they're on the brink of bankruptcy because you're always hoping right, that right. that funding you can't be will like, come we're through in and trouble, save it. We're in trouble because no, then you if you do sell, yeah. then you sell for a very poor price. <laughs> no. Well, if, if you're running a tech startup, for example, it's it's very non-CEO-like to yeah. go to your employees and look, look, we're in deep shit. Um, right, if this right. money doesn't come through, too, right? then they run for the exits. And then yeah. it's, you know, yeah. Right. No, for, for the good of the company, you you're almost essentially have to lie by... Oh, mission, basically. Yeah, right. Um, you, you know, that's almost part of your job, really, is, yeah. is, is to keep the hope alive. Yeah. Um, which, you know, a lot of which you can argue is either fair or not fair, you know. Mm-hmm. Employees yep. should be informed. But if they're informed, then, yeah, they're going to they're gonna jump. They're yep. going to jump ship. So, hmm. Yep. Tough one. Oh, well, it was a hats off to them for making it work for so long. Yeah, um, definitely. Yeah. So anyway, it's an, it's an experiment. Everyone knows it's you know, I've I've got a, like a friend of mine who did a startup, and it's like we're going to do this. Like they got um, some VC backing or some private uh, backing. Yeah, angel anyway. funding, something. Yep. Yeah, something like that. Angel funding, which kept them going for a year, and they went. But in the end, they went right. We've spent a year. We've tried this. We know the market. This there is just no market for this thing. Like yeah. it, it was a it was a service based thing, and they went look. There just is no market yeah. for this. We tried, and it's just not there. So let's fold up and 
walk away and we learn there is no you yeah. know it's just not possible to do this so there's so, a uh, there's a podcast i started listening to that's been around for a while called how i made this and oh, okay. uh it's good it's an npr based podcast real good right. um and they had the founder of chipotle on and he's really good speaker and just really good right. uh, everything right like mm-hmm. you know just really has his stuff together surprisingly yep. like i i don't I, I, not surprisingly but right. he's telling the story of like the do you know what chipotle is by the way I've heard of it, but... Did you guys have it in Australia? I don't even know if you have it no, in Australia. No, I don't. I don't okay. well, it's like a burrito place. So they make like burritos. It's like really big in the States and it's just, you know, really pretty well sustainably forced, uh, sourced food rather. And right. um, they've got like 2,500 shops. Right. But the thing that was... I've, I've never seen one here. So. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So like the thing that was amazing to me is that he's telling the story of the Genesis and, it, you know, it came from the idea of like the mission, the burritos that were in the mission in San Francisco and he brought it to Boulder and... He said, like, they made more money in the first month. Or he made enough money in the first two months to pay off his father's $80,000 loan that he gave to him, which he was very grateful cool. for. Yep. Which, But, like, that kind of, like, like imagine having that in the electronics industry, right? Of, like, mm-hmm. if you sold more more meters than you possibly could, right? You hit some some unknown, you know, uh, yeah, market it, need, it, it, right? Need, right. I'm not right. saying that it's easy at that point. But like, how often does that happen? Where it's like, oh, of course, right? It's yeah, just like okay, right, obvious. You know, like, right? That, that yeah. is that is like the you know good on this guy for 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 hitting that need and and for making a product that people love yeah. so much. But at the same time, like, but you damn, don't that's know rare. Until you try it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't know until you try it, and that's right. the thing. Right. You well, know? remember when Gerald was on and we were talking to him about that, and like he was, you know, he was hmm. so uh, Gerald. Uh, I forget his last name. But he was the Civionics, and he was talking about like shopping a, an idea around, right? This is like again right. going back to that product idea. That's right. Yes. You know, like, and he finally yeah. found it, which is great. But, mm-hmm. but like that that fit is so important to like uh-huh. you shouldn't even think about building. You know, like you know the fit because people obviously like DMMs. You don't know if they're yeah. going to like the specific one you're making, but you know well, they like DMMs. My new micro, my new right, mo- yeah. Mo- Micro supply, for example, it's not your regular power supply, exactly. so I don't you have, know. You have no if idea pe- if people will use it, right? I don't. Or, right? right, and so like I, I can have my gut feel based on my sure. thirty years in the industry and what I want, but right. Right. whether or not that I, you just don't know. But say say okay, let's go to a fictional thing, right? So we talked at the top <laughs> of the show about like you know the EEV block spark generator, which I'm probably going to name yeah, the right. show <laughs> after uh, the spark yeah. gap generator. Uh, <laughs> but like you don't know if that's a need in the market, right? And no. you shouldn't go and build a thousand of them. You know, right. like obviously, and we're not even talking about tech shop at this point because they built very slowly and they seem to, you know, measure their needs. But like, mm-hmm. like you just don't know. And and the the idea that you've, you know, the the idea is that that a company builds something that everybody needs and wants right away yep. is just that's like the you know that's like talking about Bill Gates as the founder of Microsoft, right? He's the one out of thousands that was super super successful. That does not happen that often. You know, most no. people flounder around a yep. lot more and fail a lot more. So. And um, it's not possible. You could have the best minds in the industry, yeah, right? The yeah. best people. And you can brainstorm until the cows come home for a, a idea. It doesn't mm-hmm. in the least way guarantee it's going to be successful. Yeah, right. You know, you, you can have people that a whole bunch of people being successful 10 times in a row. They can get together and build the world's best idea for a widget or whatever it is, service. And no, it may completely flop. Right. Yep. You just, you know, it's there's a lot of subtle things which go into the success of a product or service. Yeah, the market and, is a fickle, yeah. a fickle uh, mistress. <laughs> it is. But being the engineers that we are, some things are just like you can tell somebody that's not going to work, and 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 you're shattering their <laughs> and dreams. Dave right? loves doing that. <laughs> I love doing Does that. Does he ever? You know? <laughs> I, I made a career of doing that. That's right. Yeah, man. <laughs> 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 and it's like, yeah, but you can't, like some people Well, there's are just, some logistics things too, right? Yeah. The, like market fit, you and I probably don't have much of a, you know, aside the from the like, Juicero, engineering space. The for example, like, <laughs> yeah. holy crap. Like you could have told them that, that like this is just freaking a joke. Right, right. right. Yeah. You know, but they're all, but we won't know until we try it. Yeah, we know. <laughs> right. We know. Right. right. Maybe <laughs> maybe yeah. a dash of common sense in there or listening right. to yeah, the, yeah. You know, sourcing. It. Or whatever. So, yeah. Uh, don't. Uh, what's the old quote? I'm not sure who it's ascribed to, but uh, don't be so open minded that your brains fall out. You know? like, <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> we don't want anyone's brains to fall out. But engineers yeah. are very. Well, no, people can get blinded by their personal 
you know, people just get blinded by their idea. They think it's just so groundbreaking and wonderful, and it's like, you know, yeah, well, oh, the classic one. Did I talk about this? I was watching the Shark Tank. You oh, guys no. have Shark. Oh, well, I hate yeah. that show. Right, right. Anyway, I was like, the wife likes it. Yeah. And anyway, so yeah, it's cringeworthy to me. And like this woman, I think I, I tweeted. I don't think we talked about it on here. That's okay. a bit the last thing for the show. Sure. And she came on, and it's like. Uh, she had one of, like a luggage finding tag, right? Which which has a barcode okay. on it, and it's oh, like, okay. and they went, yeah, and what? And she went, it's a luggage finding tag that like hooks up to the like scan it on the internet and your details, and people can scan, get an app on their phone, and then they scan it, and then they can figure find your lost luggage or your lost camera or whatever you attach these barcode tags to, <laughs> and it's like, I like. I, I just face palmed and went, there are right. already, I didn't even need to check. I already knew that there were 50 identical products on the market. Oh, yeah. Right. And it's like, and everyone, and like, and all the sharks went, you know, this isn't unique, right? And and they went, how much money have you put into this? And she went, oh, I, I mortgaged my house and oh, put like God, a, a yeah. quarter of a million dollars into this idea. But my my son, who's a tech guy, he really believes in it. You know, and it's like, and they they had to be blunt with her. They went, "This just take your money, like just <laughs> take 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 the losses. This will never ever work." Yeah. And it's like, oh my! So during the show, I was like checking, and sure enough, like a hundred other people have done oh, this sa- exact like, like on they Amazon, did, probably right, like already for sale, yeah, all that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, already for sale. Like, and they didn't mention, even like, do the most dumb rudimentary idea in the first check. Place. <laughs> it's, well, no, it's it's not a bad idea if you're the first to do it, maybe. I mean, right. it's not a bad idea. If, like, who's going to scan your no, tag for you? No, nobody's going to do it. No, right, but, right. But like, like tile let's, let's is good, go, like because right, it's it yeah. does it without anyone interacting with it, right? Yeah, but but let's just say, in theory, if you're sure. the first to come up with in the theory, idea, yes. maybe you can get some early market traction, perhaps. Sure. You know, just ignoring the fact that it's a, yeah, not a very practical idea. But yeah, like oh, like the most rudimentary Google search could show that your idea wasn't right. in the least way unique. And how could you like? And she mortgaged her house because she believed in the eye. And nobody, yeah. obviously nobody had the guts to tell her. And it's like, and they went, what have you spent the money on? Oh, app development. Marketing. <laughs> and, and, and the app wasn't even, yeah, marketing. And the app wasn't even oh. finished. And it was like, are you like, and they just had to tell her, like, Yikes. seriously. That's rough. <laughs> reality check, you know. Yeah. So, so you get blinded by your idea. And you just don't, you, you know, you're just, Ignore everything else that points towards it not working, you mm-hmm. know. Right. And yeah, I guess gotta, we're gotta, all going to be got, guilty of it. I was going to say you got to got to get out of the building, right? That's what uh, right. Steve Blank talks <laughs> about. Got to got to talk to some real humans at some point. You know? Yeah, that's it. Oh and man, as soon as possible. Yeah. There you go, Dave. Released at Micro Supply right now. Right. Get some feedback. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you've 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 seen it. You I've thought? It. It, did you think it was a? I gave some unsolicited suggestions. I thought yep. it's. Uh, yep. I think it'll be interesting to see the specs. Um, yep. Yeah, it looks looks like a piece of test but gear. It looks like the real deal, all right. It looks like the real deal. Yeah. But it's a niche market. It's not. Yes. Everyone's not going to have a need for this thing. It's deliberately not. You right. know, if people think it's going to be a bench power supply, you no. know, and it's your traditional. You already have yeah. a market, so that's another another thing, right? If if yeah. tag yeah. if tag lady had owned like you know barcode scanners.com for 10 years right right uh, right <laughs> that changes the equation right <laughs> right yeah got it yeah uh, anyway <laughs> so oh, there you man. go okay well this has been a great product stuff uh, product product based thing this week of waffling we've been waffling like like it's our job <laughs> it kind of is <laughs> well we don't really get paid for this that's right yeah. well you get what you pay for. Yep. <laughs> cool, man. Well, let's uh, let's waffle again next week, yeah. Yep. Sounds Catch good. you next time.